Welcome to the channel, people. Today I have paint stick DIYs for you, and we're gonna be using these one gallon paint sticks and five gallon paint sticks. They're both $1.48, depending on which pack you buy, the amount you get is different. This shelf we are creating is going to need five five gallon paint sticks. We're going to arrange the paint sticks so one's, you know, every other is above the other. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that. Then we're gonna mark them to size. You can have them as long as you want. I'm doing 12 inches because I need to nip the tip off these joints. I know a lot of people leave it on there. I'm gonna cut mine off. I don't like it. And I don't emphasize this enough, but wear proper PPE when you're cutting things down, people. So I clamped these painter sticks in here in a tower like this to nip those yucky tips off. If you're new to cutting things, do one at a time. I don't recommend getting wild like me, but I'm a professional. I'm just kidding. I'm not a professional. I just am lazy and I figured let's just do it all at once. So I clamped them joints in there and cut it. Next, we're gonna take our one by six and make our shelves. And we're only cutting about three inches, not much, just about three inches. And then we're gonna take our strip that we cut and cut it again so we have two shelves. And really it's three because I cut an extra one and they're all different sizes. You can create your shelves however big or short or long or tall that you want. <laughs> you don't have to use these measurements but I wouldn't mind to just all be different. And then I took some wood glue and put in between the painter sticks and then I'm just kind of moving them to the place I want them in and stapling the backs. Also be mindful as you're stapling because you know, you can miss or the pieces don't go in completely and you don't want to hammer these joints too much because they're thin. So I accidentally, you know, didn't get the staple in there right and I had to pull it out with some needle nose pliers. I did that off camera, I'm saving you guys. But also when you're doing this, you want to keep in mind since you're not putting like a flat piece across the back, that these are going to be a little wiggly. See, I'm <laughs> a little wiggly. And it's not a huge deal because I'm putting the shelves on the front with more wood glue and then I'm gonna set a bunch of whatever on top of the shelves for 24 hours to make sure that they don't move. So once this all dried, it was just stuck in one place. You could use a shim, a piece of trim, or another painter stick to just go across the whole back if you want it, but I just use my staples. Next, I'm taking some of Dixie Belle's chocolate and watering it down so we have more of a stain than we do a paint. I want to create a blended stained wood look on this instead of more of a blended painted look. And doing this while you're watering them down is super easy. You also can continue painting while they're still wet. It doesn't have to be completely dry. This is just another way to create a blended look and it doesn't take a lot of practice like it does if I'm using my chalk paints. That kind of takes a little bit of effort, but also you get to see the wood grain coming through as well with this when you water down your paints. This khaki goes so well with this and it also blends really well having an acrylic go over top of a chalk paint with some water. I don't even think it took me 10 minutes to paint the entire project. This was was super easy but you do want to keep in mind that if you use wood glue it will show through your paint so be mindful that when you're using heavier on the paint that you're covering up the wood glue in those sections so you don't see the stain of the wood glue these two colors blended together so nicely but do look over it and see if you have any little holes or spots and continue to try to blend it before everything completely dries so you don't have different variations in your paint once it's all dry it's time to bring out the crusty bit paintbrush <laughs> use a crusty bit paintbrush to do dry brushing and it's super easy just kind of drag it on down there and the harsh points will put some of the paint on your project. I'm just taking Waverly's white for this and I'm not going heavy in with it. Very light just adding a little bit of something extra onto it and that's it for this one. Thank you. 
This wall decor piece has us cutting painter sticks in different sizes so this way we can create a background. We're using the smaller painter sticks for this one but you can use the larger ones if you want. Just remember that the measurements may vary for your project. There really was no method to this madness. I just started taking the pieces, putting them together. I made sure they were all the same height for the entire process. So when I cut a couple smaller pieces, I made sure that they fit perfectly with some of the medium sized pieces to give us like a faux wood wall looking piece. I really don't have another name for it other than faux wood wall decor piece. We're gonna need some wood glue to attach all the pieces. And you're gonna also want a brace for the back of this. The thing with the smaller paint sticks is you cannot staple them with the tiniest little staples <laughs> that I have, it is it will pop through the tiny paintbrush sticks. So what we need to do is make sure we got a brace for the back of this and make sure that we're gluing this with our front down so we don't have to try and pick the pieces up and then they just start plopping everywhere. So we can take our shim, because that's what I'm using for this. I don't want to waste the painter sticks. So we can take our shim and I'm taking the skinny side of the shim. So this way my nails will go through it. The thick side of the shim, it doesn't really let the nails go through. So cut the thin side of the shim if you want to use that as a brace. And now we're going to paint it. We're going to use several different colors to paint it. You could use one color if you want and maybe do some dry brushing over just the one color but we're not doing that we are going to paint this several different colors and i'm using a mall screen a white and then these two colors right here i knew i wasn't going to be able to re remember the name storm the voice so i was like i need to show them these you're going to want to let all of these dry so this way you can come in and sand them down Sanding is gonna help, especially if you're not a perfect painter, sanding is gonna help you kind of just get rid of all the mistakes between the different colors of wood. And you can use anything from like 150 up. It doesn't have to be a real low grit. And if you don't have anything 150, 200 would be fine. Get rid of all your dust bits and then make sure you put a little sealer coat over this before you get to our next step. So I picked this up. I think I got these from Dollar General. I'm not sure. But look at this hot mess. Come on. We can't even finish popping the pieces out of our stencil here. I gotta like waste my time plucking them out. Like aren't stencils supposed to already come ready? Like ready to use. This was not a ready to use stencil. I don't remember where I got it. Probably was Dollar General. Maybe that, I don't think it was craft, craft or square, but you know, cause usually they say craft or square. But anyhow, I'm just taking a little corner piece to add a little something in the corner. And then we're gonna take some Dollar Tree transfers and we're using the whole top of this sheet, people. <laughs> the whole top, we're getting wild. We're gonna put it on down. This is why I said you wanna put a little bit of a sealer on top of this because if you don't have a sealer down before you start doing this, it can tend to cause you a lot more rubbing and toughing and all that jazz on your hands because they're harder. It's like not automatically sticking to this paint. So try and get you a little bit of sealer down before you start rubbing these on, especially when you're doing so many of them. Lastly, we're just gonna take a little metal, galvanized metal piece I had here. I'm a little craft stash from Hobby Lobby and it's not cut perfect or anything. I am adding some Gorilla Glue gel onto the back of it and then we're gonna press it and let it dry. For this decor piece, we're taking five of the smaller paint sticks and we're going to just paint them on up. I didn't think you needed me to show you how to attach and glue all of them <laughs> together again. So I saved you that and the painting. You're welcome, you're welcome. But really, I just wanted to get to the fun part. See our little owl, our little owl. We're gonna put the owl in the center. I don't remember where I got this joint, but it's super cute and I wanted to just do something different to it. 
So I'm taking, I got this recently out of Michael's brows and video. Their papers were on sale for like 25 cents. Do you watch my brows and videos? Because I'm trying to help you budget, plan, save money, and get inspired for your next project. Anyhow, I scooped this up at Michael's and now we're going to just rip it one up in the little pieces. And we're just gonna decoupage it into little sections that make no sense in particular on our app. We're, you know, just slap it on there. Okay, slap it on there. And while you're at it, throw an extra layer of the Mod Podge on top of this once it's all dry because it's going to save us some elbow grease when we go to put these transfers on here. I wasn't really sure what transfers I was going to use, so I went digging in the bottomless hole that is my craft stash and came across these. Now, I know what you're thinking, Brandy, you just used them in the previous DIY. Yeah, right, listen, okay, listen. I didn't know I was going to use them in the one before this and I filmed and then I edited and this is how it came out. Okay. <laughs> so The project before this was filmed technically after this, but it just made sense while I was editing. Just roll with me people. Okay. Pick out your little transfers and then we're going to rub them on there. And in the process, make sure you don't have this problem because the little butterfly started detaching and I couldn't fix it no matter what I was doing I was like why are you falling apart on me so I was trying with my finger and that was horrible that was absolutely these things are so thin do you guys know how thin these are I was like oh no wing hold on <laughs> let me get you on here just hold on wing and it just I couldn't get any more off of the actual piece so I thought let's get some more transfers and put in the hole and hopefully no one will notice and I'll just not say nothing but you guys know me I gotta tell you <laughs> we gotta tell you all the goodies anyhow it eventually worked itself out it turned out fine in the end you'll see in the reveal in a second but on our way to that part we're gonna need some ribbon so well these are not necessarily ribbon ribbon and you can use whatever kind you want for this this is such a cool idea to be able to add a little bit of extra to any of these wood pieces to just sit or hang on your wall or put on a fireplace mantle near a tv on a bookshelf so pick a ribbon, grab you some tacky glue, and then put a healthy heap in on your projects. You're going to want to allow this to dry for at least 30 minutes before you carry on putting your second layer on. Or if you want to just leave it with just the one layer, you go right ahead. Do you? I'm here to support, you know, your DIY journey. And, you know, half my projects don't go as planned anyway, so who am I to do <laughs> Anyhow, that's going to be it for this one, people. This decoupage project has us using four of the painter sticks and I cut them to about eight inches. Then we're going to make sure we glue them up and attach them all properly. Paint a nice plain background, a light color, because that's gonna help our napkin that we're gonna use show up on our project that much better. If you use darker paints and a light napkin, it usually doesn't show up that well. We're going to also need a piece of book paper for this, and I cannot wait to use these Dollar Tree napkins. Have you guys seen these at Dollar Tree? Oh yeah, they're Dollar Tree napkins. To start off, I'm just ripping out sections of the book paper, and I'm also going to rip out the section of the napkin that I want to use for our project. I'm purposefully ripping in the places for the things that I want to keep for our project for the decoupage. If you want to cut it, go right ahead, but I always feel like sharp lines don't look natural to me so I don't cut and leave the sharp edges very often. I'm not saying I never do it, I just don't always do it. Everyone has their own decoupage technique people but mine has always been less is more when it comes to using thin napkins and thin paper. The more you use the more bubbly and wonky and saturated it looks. So I usually just do tiny sections with a little bit of Mod Podge, hurry up and press that sucker on there and then carry on. And if I'm feeling 
real good that day, I don't use my sponge, but mostly when I'm using thin paper or napkins, I will use the sponge to press down. I like to think that the Mod Podge presses through it, touches the sponge, it kind of helps it all stay and not have a lot of lumpy bumpies. Once I let this dry, I then brought in the little florals on the bottom of the napkins. It needed something, it was a little empty. Once that dry, I then brought in my fluffy blush brush makeup brush. And I'm going to take, I cannot tell you what colors I use because I actually took several colors to mix them to get the colors that complemented the colors in the napkin. I wanted the piece to look like one cohesive unit, like there wasn't an ending between the napkin and the books and taking paint and blending it like this is a little trick to help that happen. I do this a lot with my furniture art as well. I need to do this on a piece for you guys so you can see that. But then we're gonna take some of this mica powder and we're gonna just add over top of it to get a little something. Be mindful with this stuff, people. It is messy and it sticks to everything. It is worse than glitter. So be very purposeful with your placement and your cleanup and your leave out of the mica powder. I added some twine at the top and a little wood flower and that is gonna be it for our last project for this video. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today, people. I hope you got some learning and entertainment out of the video. Let me know what you think about these DIYs in the comments. And until next time, bye!